with that growth of that's also become the growth of a bunch of bogus shit too. Exactly. You know, so how does one go about navigating this field? I think it's really important to know who you're buying from and ensuring that they've got uh, COAs on the product. So certificate of analysis done by a third party lab. Right. That's important to know. Most of the raw materials are all coming from the same places. So even just somebody says, well, I'm making it, it's made in America. Well, that that doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that it's better. They actually still have the same raws here and they processed, they processed here. Or it can be, well, I'm getting this from, uh, I, I'm, I'm getting this from the pharmacy. It's going to be better. I've gotten a lot of bad test from pharmacy over over, mm-hmm. <laughs> over what I've made myself. <laughs> so I'd rather do myself because I can put it in the, uh, you know, a C8, C10 uh, caprylic uh, acids will reduce inflammation. And, uh, and, uh, and, and then I, and, and then I use a, uh, uh, gosh darn it, um, argon. Well, with the, with the, the powders or the oils, is there cross contamination? Yeah. Yes, cross contamination. So, like, just so there's a lot of the big pharmacies that are using over, you know, they're compounding overseas, and there's very little oversight. Um, the owner of the Ways to Well covered this really well on a Rogan podcast. Um, that you know, some of the significant contamination and other issues in some of the the major pharmaceutical brands. So, just because yeah. it's coming from that, I honestly am less trustworthy of that than someone that I know their supply chain and they're managing it and they've got the COAs, right? But it is it is a big issue. There is so much monk, particularly in peptides and the injectable peptides. If you look at that, um, buying anything off of Amazon, sketchy as shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Were there any other topics you wanted to go over I didn't bring up? Um, there's, I'd say... I, uh, while we're, we've touched on a couple things. So I, I was going to, I want to touch on methylene blue for a minute. Yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah. I, 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 I'd like to hear about that. Just cause RFK is using the methylene blue doesn't mean you should. Okay. Like I, I, I just, I cannot get on the methylene blue bandwagon. Like anything, there's a time and place. Just like I said, there's a time and place for wearing some arch supports and some cushiony shoes. There's a time and place for methylene blue. Like it is going to just like it's going to do some of the same things that we just talked about with 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 those mitochondrial peptides around improving the efficiency of that electron transport chain and the mitochondrial function and energy production. Right. That's good. I've post COVID take some methylene blue using it in general to do that. It has so many negative repercussions because it downregulates nitrogen oxidative production. So we're affecting the endothelial, endothelial cells of the heart, the brain, like all these areas. And that just to me, I can't, like, I can't get over Like, why would I want to do that? I mean, literally I've created products, the opposite of that, like, mm-hmm. you, you, you know, L-citrulline, uh, alpha catagluterate, um, uh, 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 betaine and hydrous, like, oh, oh, my vasoblitz blitz mixture. Um, like it, the getting into the hydrodynamic stuff, like the feeding, the tissue supplying nutrients, getting good turnover. Like, again, that's feeding, that's a massive for your heart function. Uh, like we want nitrous oxide production to support good vascular health. Um, we want it for the brain. Like these are all really critical. And so, that's why I said I wanted to get back to GHK-KU earlier. So one of the other benefits of methylene blue is the upregulation of the mitochondrial sensitivity to sunlight. Well, GHK, well, actually, I guess I don't have any studies referencing that it does. Try it, and you'll see that, <laughs> that uh, it, GHK-KU is blue, by the way, too. Um, but it has positive ramifications on nitrogen oxide production, upregulates... You, you, it, it, it upregulates that sensitivity. Maybe it does. I'm going to have to uh, check my research on that one, um, whether I've got some validating research to that. But I know for a fact, if I take GHKKU, sit in a red light, go to sleep, my HR values shoot up. If I have somebody else do it, it does that as well, right? Um, I see an improved output of the function of the red light therapy 
uh, when I use that as an intervention, when I employ GHK, you know, let's say 30 minutes before that. So using GHK is to me a far superior methodology. Again, a lot of my approaches up front, they're opposite of what some mm -hmm. of the bandwagon uh, is, but that's my reasoning behind the methylene blue. It's just a, it, it is a big bandwagon thing that everybody's on. And it's I, a big I, one right now. I, I, and I tried to like, I'm, I'm, I'm coming out saying exactly the, the opposite of that. And I, I, I've been saying that for a while in my community and, you know, people have been disagreeing now. Some of those people are coming around agreeing with me now. Right, Anthony, uh, <laughs> <laughs> on that one. So, um, yeah, uh, nitrates, lactate, uh, you know, upping that nitrogen oxide, GHK dash KU, uh, that is like the Vasoblitz product is like the standalone fundamental product i recommend most anybody that's trying to do any optimization to do if you're doing trt you're going to get if you're having a good like anything that you do it's going to enhance that because we're enhancing the volumization like we've got more nutrients more glucose more you've got fuller muscle bodies that looks good yeah. but it also means you're less likely to injure yourself you're going to train you're going to get better results from training uh, you're going to recover better i mean so essentially you're moving nutrients through the system exactly. more efficiently but it's a so here's the thing uh so a lot of people put those products in pre-workouts with all your stimulants, but then you're only taking it on training days. It's a chronic loading product like creatine. So the studies that actually show the enhancement in muscular endurance and anabolism uh, in hypertrophy, those are all done after loading continuously for three weeks. So when I created the VasoBlitz product, it was the first product on the market of that type that was a daily use product, which is why it doesn't have a stimulant in it because it's a daily use product. So anybody doing that, please follow, again, the strategies, the protocols are really important for that, whether you use mine or somebody else's product, understanding those mechanisms. And then same thing, when you put it with a pre-workout, there's different levels of sensitivity to the pre-workouts, right? So people might only be doing a half dose or training three days a week you're never you're never in a, ending up with the saturation level that you need of those components to get those results and I particularly because uh, carnivore is so hot anybody on carnivore needs to be taking those products because you're flat it's affecting your your performance like you're just like it really enhances um you know anybody that's on those low carb keto carnivore type diets but I think anyone that is focused on, you know, like these are fundamentals, creatine and a really well-rounded nitric, nitric oxide uh, formula. One that is particularly hopefully hitting both separate pathways of nitric oxide production like I'm doing. Um, I also put lactate in there. People don't realize the benefits of uh, the lactate and the impact that it has. That's actually uh, particularly in the brain as well. Um, muscular endurance there's a lot of a lot of yeah. things as it relates to that i don't think anyone else actually uses that but it's uh it's incredible i challenge anybody to try my product for a month and and not uh ah shit i didn't mean that be a whole product pitch piece i was going to talk about methylene blue yeah. nitric oxide but it all it, it all kind of it, it all full, ties full. it all ties back uh to the to the same um yeah and we touched on pmf i want to talk about that because that's one of the things i've never talked about my use of the PMF uh, mats before, again, for that, that reason, I've really been playing around with them. So the newer ones are cool. So the clinical one I've got, it's got these set programs in it and I've had it for a long time. Like I said, it was really great for my recovery during that, that really challenging stress cycle when I was mm -hmm. pushing <laughs> crazy loads. Like, I think that may be something that people don't understand about my training for those is it's not like the thousand pound squat but what i did to pull that off when you look at those training cycles the fact that i was doing you know nine sets every single week you know over 970 pound or nine reps three sets every single week when i was doing the thousand pound deadlift cycle i was doing 12 to 15 sets off of a block and then uh, once a week and another nine to 12, you know, reps, sorry, reps, 
you know, off the floor every week. You know, we're talking 850 plus yeah. from a deficit at those repetitions, 900, 950 plus for those amount of repetitions every week. Like that was challenging. So I found that product to be really great, but the being able to tailor the frequencies is really phenomenal. So like when I made this recent career transition, <laughs> there's a lot of stress. And so I started using a lot of stimulants, not something I would recommend, but I went really heavy and I'm like, I'm just going to do this. And I'm like, it's going to be a challenge when I come off. And the time I came off became, well, it just happened by accident because I started using the PMF and I use the PMF, which is great. So if you're using red light, red light, I like recommending, um, high frequency. So having a unit yourself is really beneficial. So understanding that the window of the growth hormone release, so this is a good time. We'll talk about red light and PMF. Is that mm -hmm. all right? Yeah. So yeah, strategies for red light. Um, so it's, it's really interesting understanding these because there's these red light, you know, not saunas, but, uh, you know, places you can go where they've got the really powerful, they hit you. But if you're going there once a week or once a month, it's only doing so much because it's only operating. You're really seeing that elevated growth hormone. The studies are like three hours after, uh, it shows a 300, uh, percent increase in stem cell release. And that's just with a little panel, like on somebody's tibia. But that starts tapering off. So that's like a six or eight hour window of effect. So even if you did a super powerful one, you've got this small window where the micro dosing of that, and then also tying it to your circadian rhythm if you can. So even if it's a lower powered panel, you know, once a day or twice a day for 10 minutes or eight minutes is way more beneficial yeah. because you're, you're doing that in that it, it, the dose response is just way more aligned. You're keeping that elevated all the time. So when I have people with chronic issues, so, you know, we're dealing with, you know, back pain that's been going a long time. We've dealt with a lot of other stuff, but we've got the healing side that we're doing. We're doing some peptides. We may put the, the red light in there. I mean, it surprised me how effective, um, the red light has been because the red light will downregulate. It'll bring your pain sense. You'll feel better immediately but you've got you know the release of that you're also cueing again improving the mitochondrial function because we're feeding uh f feeding those mitochondria with photons and then the pmf can be done at the exact same time so from a from a lifestyle you know intervention standpoint it's like lay on the pmf mat with the red light on you you've not so what's added, the half life added, of the pmf then um i don't know what the half life of the pmf is i I, I'm just recently started pulling because I used the that heavy that was like six years ago, right? And now I've just started getting back into it. Uh, typically, they recommend twice a day, so I haven't looked into the impact of that. And it's more recently that I became aware of some of the other benefits as far as like again, the inflammatory or cytokine uh, reduction side of it. I was doing a lot of it for the vascular blood flow, which by the way it cues well with using nitrates like yeah, 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 they all yeah. like it, and you can feel it too you take if you take some nitrates and get on the pmf mat like you'll feel that even more like when you go to train right it's 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 really cool so implementing that at the that same time is a really great addition and it has so how were you implementing that was it pre-training or was it recovery or was it all so I like to do so I, I like to do it in the morning so first thing and i run the pmf at a high frequency so running it at uh like 30 hertz and so this is how i accidentally came off caffeine because i was just downing caffeine all day long i just do a light dose in the morning to get started and not get too ramped up so i wake i woke up you know had a shot of espresso after i after i did my pmf and my red light i'm working all day long and normally i'm like by 10 o'clock Boom, I got a pound, you know, 200 yeah. milligram. And then pre workout, so on. I get to the afternoon, I'm like, oh, I haven't had any caffeine today. Like, and then I just, I just stopped. All, I, all I'm taking now is just like my morning shot of espresso. And if I'm training, I'll add in some, I'll, I'll add in some pre work just because I like, I like to get a little more jacked up yeah. for training, but I don't even need to. Like, it's crazy. I just went off that first week. Like, the first day was by accident. And then in the evening, I run a, a low hertz. 
somewhere in like the two, six or eight range uh, for Hertz, which you can feel it like it'll almost put me to sleep sometimes. I'll get in there and it'll just like knock you out. If I run it too low, it really does that effect. You can run a little bit higher and it kind of stimulates like if I want to be doing more creative thinking, uh, if I'm doing some planning or just reflecting on things, I'll run it a little bit higher, maybe six or eight hertz, and it kind of stimulates that process. And it'll do that more of the cognitive function at the higher frequencies too, but that's why I run it like I ramp it all the way up in the morning. So when you have all these things running together, how do you know what's making the difference and what's not? Well, I've been using, uh, I, I've implemented them in a series. Okay. Yeah. So like I said, the, the PMF, I just started using again, I've had the clinical one and then I didn't use it for the last year because it broke. So I've been using the red light uh, the last six months with great results. And then I added the PMF back and that's why I'm just getting back into my research on the PMF, but I've already used the PMF in relate in relation to nitrates in relations to peptides before independently. Of yeah. The and that goes back now, to the grand goal. I'm adding yeah. that back in and then playing around because the newer units, one, they're more, so they're way cost effective. Now you don't need to spend thousands of dollars. Like you can, you can get a mat for five, seven hundred dollars or something like that. And, you know, really nice one for like fifteen hundred. That's the one I use. But they also have the controls for the instead of these built in protocols, mm -hmm. just you can dial in and play around with those frequencies, which I'm I'm really loving as well. So. So, yeah, just getting on to some other mechanisms and how to employ those things again, I think hopefully you're seeing kind of the theme of where I'm focused. I'm getting older, obviously, but like, I just want to feel good yeah, and, and live well. And that's, that's where I, that's where I'm at right now.